Dragon Quest is one of gaming's oldest franchises, spanning a history of over 30 years with 11 main entries and a variety of spin-offs. The series is a massive hit and cultural phenomenon in Japan, but has never really taken off in the West. Many people, even those who enjoy Japanese role-playing games or JRPGs, have never played a Dragon Quest game nor know much about the series, and I was one of those. I knew it existed due to my old issues of Nintendo Power Magazine, but I never picked one up until Dragon Quest XI, which is the most recent mainline title, was announced just a couple of years ago. I have since played three games in the mainline series, 8, 9, and 11, and absolutely adore them. While I'm still very much a newcomer, I wanted to share what I've learned about the series for those of you who might otherwise overlook the series in hopes that you may someday experience one of gaming's greatest unknown giants and fall in love with it as I have. The history of Dragon Quest begins in the early 1980s with series creator Yuji Horii, who, while on a trip to the United States, was inspired by some of the Western RPG games he saw, including tabletop RPGs like Dungeons and & Dragons and computer games like Wizardry. He and a small team of creators and developers combined elements of these games together and created what would essentially become the grandfather to the console JRPG, Dragon Quest. The original Dragon Quest was released on the Famicom, also known as the Nintendo Entertainment System in the West, in 1986 and was published by developer Enix. It was also released in the West under the name Dragon Warrior in 1989 due to the title Dragon Quest being copyrighted by a tabletop game in the US. The original Dragon Quest was a critical hit and was the inspiration behind many other games, including most notably the Final Fantasy series. One thing that makes Dragon Quest unique is that the character and enemy art for the series was developed by Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball Z. Now I admit that part of the reason I didn't get into the series earlier is because I'm actually not a huge fan of that style, but man, Younger Me did judge a game by its box cover, and I admit that I regret that. But the art is actually what helped the series become as big of a deal as it did. The music from the series, composed by Koichi Sugiyama, was also very popular and inspired many other well-known game composers, such as Final Fantasy's Nobuo Uematsu, to create many game scores we have cherished for decades. Each entry in the main Dragon Quest series is its own contained story, so you don't have to play them in any particular order. Instead, the games are linked together thematically. For instance, battles are always turn-based, so you will recognize many enemies throughout each entry, most famously the slimes, Villagers will repeat designs throughout, and I promise you, it's charming and not lazy. You save in churches, gain a ship to sail across the world about a third way through the game, save the world from a big evil bad person, and oh my gosh, this series has the best puns. So many puns. The enemies, the locations, they're all puns, and they're clever ones. Like in Dragon Quest IX, there's a builder who goes and makes a replica of his hometown Zir, completely out of stone and rocks from a mountaintop, since he wished he could always have returned to home before he died and he just missed home. So the name of this stone copy of Zir? Zir Rocks. Zir Rocks. I love this series. Dragon Quest games are also known for their characters and story. Characters are often quirky yet deep. This series does not take itself too seriously and manages to avoid the high doses of melodrama I am used to from this genre. After putting in a lot of hours playing a bunch of Final Fantasy games, picking up Dragon Quest VIII is such a breath of fresh air in comparison. But I am always amazed at how these bright, colorful characters can make me smile one moment and fight back tears the next. Some games, such as the newest release, Dragon Quest XI, and fan-favorite Dragon Quest V, are more story-heavy and tell a bigger overarching narrative throughout. However, this series is more known for its almost, I guess you could say, TV serial type nature. For example, while Dragon Quest IX does have a bigger story that ties everything together at the end, that isn't really the main focus of its story. Rather, each town you visit is almost a short story in and of itself. You grow to know a specific cast of characters, know their hopes and troubles, and often get to help them reach a conclusion before finding the next town. I love this balance, as some games who focus so intensely on telling a straightforward narrative feel awkward when you're also encouraged to go explore and complete side quests that distract you from the narrative. And the way Dragon Quest tells these stories does not feel weak, and also allows you to play around with different emotions and tones in each different town that might not work otherwise. Now the Dragon Quest games are also associated with other typical JRPG tropes, partly because this series established them, such as games being long and you definitely getting your money's worth out of them, I'm looking at you Dragon Quest VII, 
you needing to level grind, although may I suggest metal slimes to make this process a lot easier on yourself. And until the last few entries in the series, battles were random encounters on the overworld map. This last part is partly why I've only played the more recent games that didn't have random encounters in them, but now also I just want more Dragon Quest in my life, so I don't care about that anymore. Oh, also, if random encounters bothers you too, Dragon Quest VIII on the 3DS doesn't have random encounter battles, so you can always play it on that system instead of the PS2, but the PS2 is also gorgeous, so let you decide. Also, while many other JRPGs have changed over the years in an attempt to modernize where they barely resemble the classic JRPG anymore, Dragon Quest managed to modernize while still fitting classically into its roots. These games don't feel sluggish, but they also celebrate what the traditional JRPG style was. They aren't ashamed of who they are, and there are people who are seriously grateful for that. Due to the series' massive popularity in Japan, Dragon Quest also offers a variety of spin-off games. You have the Dragon Quest Hero series, which is a spin-off from Dynasty Warrior. Dragon Quest Builders is like a mashup of Dragon Quest with Minecraft. Even the Slimes have their own game. The Dragon Quest games help shape gaming as it is today, so it's sad that it doesn't get more recognition it deserves outside of Japan. But I do see that beginning to change. These games are more than just a primitive look back at how game design used to be. No, these games are incredibly enjoyable in their own right. They have perfected what it means to be a classic turn-based JRPG. And if you are at all interested in getting into Dragon Quest, now is a great time. The hero, aka so many of the main characters from each game, are now in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Some of the spin-offs I mentioned are easily attainable and affordable. Dragon Quest 7 VII and 8 are on the Nintendo 3DS store. The first three games are available on the Switch. And the one I would most recommend for newcomers, Dragon Quest XI, is available on the PS4, Nintendo Switch, and soon to also be on the Xbox One and Steam in December. The definitive edition for Dragon Quest XI even lets you play the game in 3D or 2D mode if you feel extra nostalgic. I'll specifically link the Switch version down below since that's the only console to have the definitive edition out already. But Dragon Quest XI is a particularly charming game. There are other YouTubers who've done dedicated reviews for it that have brought it so much more justice than a general series overview like this one could, especially that guy who did the Kotaku review. But if you want me to rant about Dragon Quest XI in particular, I can gladly do that for you if that's something you want. I hope as the years goes on, Dragon Quest will continue to grow in popularity. And with that, more copies could also be made in the West and easier to obtain. It would be great to find some of the older games in the series for affordable prices so more people could continue to discover and play them. Like seriously, I remember Nintendo Power talking about the remakes of multiple games in the series on the Nintendo DS leading up to Dragon Quest IX's release, and I am kicking myself now for not picking one up. Like what do you mean? A used copy of Dragon Quest V is $100? I'm dying, guys! But anyways, I have loved binging the series since quarantine began and really wanted to rant about it. If this at all interests you, please pick one up. Let me know what you think. And as always, thank you for watching. Liking and subscribing always helps the channel out, and I also have a Patreon I will link below as well if you would like to directly support the creation of these videos. This has been The Girl with the Controller, and I hope you have a lovely day.